Okay, this next one is for IF3. We, we need to draw the Lewis structure and determine all these properties for uh, IF3. So that includes uh, sigma and pi bonds. And so if I was going to start off with IF3, the first thing I would do would be to count up my valence electrons. I get seven from I and fluorine brings seven each. So that's 21 total. Add them together and I get 28 valence electrons. So let's go ahead and arrange the atoms, kind of put them around the, uh, the page symmetrically. And then once I've done that, I can start by drawing a single bond between the central atom and all the other atoms. Now that I do that, I would remove those six electrons from the three bonds from, uh, from my original valence electron count. And I end up back with 22 valence electrons to finish out the structure. So let's try some lone pairs. Uh, there's six, there's... 12, there's 18, now the fluorines have all octets. So 19, 20, iodine has an octet, but what do I do with the last two? Well, iodine is one of those things that can have an expanded octet. Remember that anything after essentially silicon and above has access to d orbitals and those d orbitals can mix into the valence bonding scheme. And we can have uh, what, a new way to decide or a different way to decide if something has an octet. So in this case, for expanded octets, you, you, something can be considered to be complete if it has eight electrons, 10 electrons, or 12 electrons. In this case, we see one, two, the extra two, plus the other eight. So this one would be 10 electrons. So when, at the end of the day, we've got octets on everything. So we're done there. All right. So if we were to count up uh, the number of geometry groups for the, for the electron geometry, I've got two lone pairs plus three bonds to fluorine. That's five electron groups. And five electron groups means trigonal bipyramidal geometry. For the molecular geometry, I have two lone pairs in that trigonal bipyramidal geometry. So that ends up being something called T-shaped. Now to see it a little bit better, what I would do is I would draw a three-dimensional version of this same molecule where I've got the two lone pairs uh, on what is essentially an equatorial bond and the and three of the two of the fluorines on axial bonds and the remaining one being on uh, the the last equatorial bond but these three atomic bonds the ones to fluorine would give rise to the molecular geometry and the molecular geometry in this case is t-shaped now, for, for a, a trigonal bipyramidal geometry, there could be two different bond angles. You could have both 90 degrees and 120. But if it's T-shaped, then the bond angles are only 90 degrees. And so that's what we get here for the bond angles. We get 90 degrees. Remember, the bond angles do come from the electron geometry, and trigonal bipyramidal could have both 90 degree and 120 degree angles. But when it's T-shaped, it turns out it's only just 90. OK, is it polar or nonpolar? It certainly is polar. The lone pairs there should help us uh, indicate that the bond dipoles don't cancel each other out. And so for intermolecular forces, we have both dispersion forces and we have dipole-dipole forces. Now, again, the hybridization comes from the electron geometry, and the electron geometry is trigonal bipyramidal. And so that's an sp3d hybridization. Just like before, we've been counting signal bonds as sigma bonds. So there's three sigma bonds. And since there are no double nor triple bonds, we have zero pi bonds. And that's it. That's IF3.